Thank you, Dr. Lee Luan. It's indeed my honor to introduce uh, Professor Datuk Norma Mansoor. Uh, nobody needs uh, uh, introduction. She is a star at the University of Malaya. Uh, she's currently the Director of Social Wellbeing Research Center at the Faculty of Economics and Administration. Uh, several hats she has uh, uh, with her. She has worked with Intan, CDC, UND, uh, OECD, ILO, European Union, and so on and so forth. So without uh, taking much time, I think uh, it would be just time if we request uh, Dr. Norma Mansoor to please share her thoughts with us. Um, uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon. Uh, I was hoping that Dr. Tarani will go on so that I, um, I, I don't have to speak because I think that all the points uh, have been made by the earlier speakers and they are in the field. Um, we at the center, most of our work is on um, the other aspects of, of social protection, although healthcare is social protection. Uh, nevertheless, I think I'll try to contribute, contribute to the discussion, but uh, running the risk of uh, repeating some of those points. Um, maybe if I could share the, the screen. Um, as as um, Prof Awang uh, mentioned, that um, the goals of vaccination uh, um, is to reduce morbidity and mortality. And I think uh, in Malaysia, especially uh, we are uh, um, uh, we are suffering. I mean, it's, it's really impacting uh, uh, both the life and also livelihood of, of Malaysians. And that called for the um, second uh, um, MCO that we are experiencing now. So I think that is uh, the most important um, is um, to uh, protect lives, basically. Yeah. The second uh, uh, goal is to minimize the impact on us, our infrastructure, our health care uh, sector, and also the economy. And uh, if we were to um, lock down the way we did in the first um, the MCO 1.0, uh, for a day of the lockdown, we would lose about 2.4 billion uh, ringgit. Yeah? So this is something that is very costly uh, uh, to, to the society. Uh, but when you talk about the economy, because I'm also the president of the Malaysian economy, um, it affects many things. It affects the lives as well. So it's not just livelihood, but it is also the lives. So uh, um, this is the consideration that um, you will have to think about. Uh, um, and I'm glad that as Prof Awang alluded to earlier that the government is looking into um, the, um, the different aims or, or why uh, uh, the vaccination in the first place. Now, the third uh, goal is on um, to reduce um, health inequalities um, consistent with the, the, with the view that the moral foundation of our public health, uh, Malaysia, uh, fortunately, uh, uh, has a universal health care. We believe in social justice and therefore the reduction of uh, inequalities uh, that is systematically uh, facing the disadvantaged groups should be uh, uh, reduced or should be addressed. Now, this is the issue that I, I like uh, uh, Professor Shaharul's point about the question of, we know we have to vaccinate, but who? The question is who uh, um, should, should, should be the priority? And, the quest, and also the question of, of who decides? Now, can I, if I go back to the question of who first, Prof Awang did mention as well that, do we know, uh, do we have the total picture of who are the uh, uh, vulnerable groups? Um, I've mentioned elsewhere that our database is not necessarily uh, complete. We do not have uh, um, uh, the, uh, the, the we, we, we do not have the numbers and, and, and also where they are. And considering the location, the kind of geography that Malaysia has, we have we still have uh, urban rural disparities. And also with the infrastructure, you have Sabah and Sarawak or parts of Kelantan, Pahang, etc. Now, this is also uh, uh, something that uh, we have to think about. And considering that the vaccine would require uh, uh, a minus uh, 70 or minus 80 degrees. So there is another issue there that we have to think about. 
And uh, Prof. Sharul also mentioned about who decides for them. Now, when we talk about universal health care, um, it is about one, wanting to assess, wanting to avail oneself to the health care. But do we make it mandatory? Now, with many other vaccina uh, uh, vaccinations, um, it is compulsory for Malaysians to go for it. But do we enforce? Do we get uh, um, uh, every child, for instance, do we know that those who are not vaccinated? Um, and what do we do when they don't? So this is uh, uh, another point to consider. And also when. We are talking about the vaccination, but exactly when are we getting getting it and, and which group will go first? That will be part of the um, part of the earlier points that, that I made. Now the um, the strategies, um, I'm trying to uh, reduce my screen. Uh, excuse me, yes, okay. Part of the um, strategy or, or uh, I outlined here five strategies is to um, maintain the economy and also to minimize societal impacts of the pandemic. Given workers are needed to continue up operating the essential services. So when you're talking about uh, prior prioritizing who should go first, then perhaps the issue of vulnerability um, should be discussed together with the, uh, um, the issue of people who are uh, um, operating the essential services. Now, strategy number two is about um, prioritizing the uh, vulnerable groups. And we talked about, I mean, the other speakers spoke about how it affects uh, um, the 65 years and older, uh, greater than the younger population. Now, what we should uh, 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 consider as well is the optimal approach to reducing the, the pandemic's economic burden as non-fatal cases would also likely propagate, thereby perpetuating the pandemic spread and the corresponding strain on the healthcare systems. Now, strategy number three, as um, uh, uh, our center talks about how uh, social protection is about life cycle. And um, Dr. Sharul has also alluded to how you have to see the, the, um, the number of years that the person can contribute to society. Now, in the case of um, vaccination, the person who can contribute to the economy would also be a, a, a person that close, close uh, or that lives together or co-reside with the, the elderly as well. And at our data, uh, we have just uh, launched the Malaysia Aging Retirement Survey, shows that majority or the majority of Malaysians live um, with uh, uh, other members of the family. That means the living arrangement is intergenerational. So you will have uh, uh, that problem or the issue. And strategy number four is to, uh, to ensure equal access. Now we know that um, access, equal access is not equivalent to equitable access. Now, so furthermore, by not targeting those groups most likely to secure the greatest health of economic benefits, an equal access policy is like unlikely to achieve. So um, there will be uh, uh, issues, uh, I'm not sure why, China went the way they did. But if you are saying that, um, just like our universal health care, which is equal access, then you will be faced with an issue of inequitable uh, um, uh, issue there. Strategy number five is um, while prioritizing certain groups at elevated risk for sp spreading the COVID-19 uh, may narrow some health disparities, but the particular impact will largely depend on the specific subpopulations targeted for vaccination. So these are uh, um, the groups that may be, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the nurses in the nursing homes, the, the prisons, and those in the PPR flats uh, uh, who are in close contact um, with one another will be uh, uh, one of the um, uh, strategies that uh, we may want to look at. Yeah. And uh, my last slide, um, why is it not moving? Um, okay, there you go. Now, how do I go back to it? All right. 
My last slide is on the universal healthcare that, um, that we have. Uh, um, and, and, and this is our advantage. Yeah? In, in fact, it is the only um, uh, universality uh, uh, approach that we have to social protection, um, whereby um, it, will, it, it will ensure that everyone uh, will get the, uh, the facilities or the vaccination. However, as I mentioned earlier that um, we have issues with our geographical location, with our, and also the, the, the type of vaccines that we're talking about. And um, also uh, uh, something to consider is that um, the places where you can get the uh, vaccine, to, to get the vaccines, yeah, whether um, it is um, at the, um, uh, whether it is uh, at community uh, uh, centers, at the hospitals or primary care centers, uh, would also determine whether um, we uh, whether uh, um, whether it will be uh, effective. So um, I think I will um, end here. Uh, um, and as, as I mentioned, that some of these issues have been raised earlier. And uh, um, again, if I can add one more point uh, uh, to the discussion, is that um, on the supply side, I think. Uh, um, uh, with regards to our social services, we talk about on this, uh, the supply side, but what's important or what we're discussing today is on the demand side as well. That the issue, uh, the question of who may uh, uh, decide and uh, who should go first, uh, what are the rights of these people? And, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that Dr. Tana mentioned that um, it is a human right. So whether they are migrants or whether they're citizens of the country, they should have an equal right. Uh, but the question is also on the fiscal side that who is paying or if the, the, the uh, country or any country for that matter is already facing some fiscal issues, then it is something that uh, um, we have to consider as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Norma Mansur for that wonderful presentation.